Okay, heading over to the US now, and we have been watching rising inflation concerns very closely, and President Biden is now making a major step to try and lower gas prices, but will it be enough? Michelle Schneider from Market Gauge joins me now. Michelle, lovely to see you as always. Um, Biden is putting forward a major step here to cooling inflation, but will it be enough? Well, I don't know how major I would call it. Some people are criticizing that the amount that he's willing to release is not really going to be enough. But it's only one factor in terms of the whole inflation narrative. And I don't think that there's anyone in particular or any policy in particular other than really jacking up rates, which of course the Fed won't do, that's going to stop the inflation train. You mentioned at the start of your show about La Nina, so let's talk about Mother Nature first a moment. The biggest inflation, and the least politicized actually, is what's happening with food prices and soft commodity prices. Coffee still continuing to accelerate. Sugar looks like it's about to explode again. Wheat continues to rock and roll. Corn. And so these are the inflation areas that we're watching. Looking at oil, J.P. Morgan actually came out today with a study that said that oil compared to where inflation was with equities 20 years ago to now should be priced at $115 a barrel. Here it is at $80 to $81 a barrel. So one could actually argue that we haven't even seen the real rise in inflation or in oil yet. Wow, that's concerning, isn't it? Now we know obviously a lot of blame here is going to OPEC as well. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think they're, they're ha OPEC is still a very solid organization and they have a lot of control and they have now said as a result that they would threaten to not do what they were going to do, which was really increase production. And so that's just one of the factors. Another factor, by the way, is there's been criticism of the oil companies. Well, the oil companies will not lower their prices, they're saying, because they're concerned about their own debt buybacks and they're also concerned about the dividends they pay to their customers. So shareholders, buy bottom line always rules with so many of these big companies. So yeah, I mean, I think that uh, when it comes to the whole oil narrative, OPEC is a, a factor and will be interesting to see what they do from here as well. Now we're obviously watching this closely, uh, Europe's going into lockdowns again and they're really facing a coronavirus surge again. Um, what is that, how, how is that represented on the markets at the moment? Well, it's interesting because it hasn't really had a major impact on the U.S. markets. Yes, in the last couple of days, we've seen some selling coming in on the heels of Powell's renomination and the fear of rates going up, although those, that fear right now is relatively unwarranted because he certainly hasn't stated that that's going to be a fact. But um, nonetheless, right now, I think that the muted response to the COVID shutdowns in terms of the equities is one thing. What I look at going back to oil is if demand wanes a bit with these lockdowns, what happens when everything comes back and the demand surges again? They're saying a lot of surpluses there, but we know that oil prices are extremely manipulated by many different powers, including OPEC. Yeah, interesting. We're definitely watching that closely, aren't we? Now, um, you touched on it briefly there, but Biden nominated uh, Jerome Powell for Fed chair for the second term in a row. What's the thinking behind this decision? Is it all about consistency here? Well, there's an expression, of course, that the markets hate uncertainty more than anything. So it was definitely somewhat of a comfort to the markets to know that Powell would be back. Um, I think that there was a smart move by Biden. Certainly it pushed the progressives aside a bit there because um, they wanted Dr. Brenner to be the new head, although he made her vice chair. And so, yeah, I think it's a good thing. He's proven time and time again, whether you want to criticize him or not, that he has a very cool head in a rough situation. And I think he's certainly going to be facing some rough situations as we get into 2022. Oh, absolutely. There's going to be rising rates, inflation concerns to tackle. And he also has been criticised, Powell, for his lack of, I guess, action against climate change as well. Um, and poverty is also, also a major factor there. So it'll be interesting to see if he does sort of address some of those issues that he was being criticised for. But progressive Democrats have set, definitely been pushed to the side. As you were just saying, I guess they were... Well, you know, in this country, we start campaigning for the next election as soon as the first election is over. So there's always going to be campaigning going on and the Democrats know that they have some real issues to contend with. Not only division within their own party, 
and again, the progressives versus the more conservative Democrats. But the Republicans particularly have a lot of talking points right now, especially with inflation, especially with oil. Whether it's legitimate or anybody's fault, it's still talking points. So it'll be, that's another reason why I believe Powell was nominated, because that will at least give some sense of crossing the aisles in terms of the intention by Biden. But yeah, it'll be, it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting. I think 2022 is going to make 2021 look very muted. Absolutely. Michelle, great to see you as always. Take care. Have a lovely week. You too.